Before we get started, though, something we got to tell you about. There is a there is a new streaming service out there. It's not well. It's been around for a little while, but it is a darn good one. It's called Film Movement Plus, and it opens up a uh, a world of award winning entertainment, including some of the best films from all across the gro- across the globe. Uh, there's hundreds of titles really waiting for you to dig in and discover. Uh, and I mean, you know, it's it's a wide array of sort of fantastic film from. Uh, basically every corner of the planet. I mean, uh, and this month they've added things like uh, a fantastic humanistic drama called uh, Song Without a Name from uh, writer-director uh, Melina Leone. And also, if you're a music fan, uh, there are a bunch of fantastic docs from filmmaker Robert Moog, uh, who did films like uh, Sun Ra, A Joyful no- Noise, or the Gil Scott Heron documentary Black Wax. There's a lot of really interesting stuff to dive into on the service from from all across all across the globe and i cannot recommend it enough and it's the app is is fully available on, on places like roku apple tv amazon fire uh as well as online and on your phone if you need to it's a it's a scant 5.99 a month which uh, which is a great deal i mean none of us are going for starbucks anymore so that's basically the price of a coffee uh, but also, as a listener of this podcast, because we love you so much, uh, Film Movement Plus is going to give you not only a 30-day free trial if you sign up, but they'll give you the next three months after that at 50% off when you use the promo code SEATS. So I just, you know, it is a basically a steal. So please go sign up for Film Movement Plus today. It is a great one. And you can find all that information and more over at filmmovementplus.com. And don't forget to sign up with the promo code SEATS. Uh, enjoy the show. Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. You know, it's WrestleMania week, so it kind of feels fitting to to pay homage to some Canadian icons of the squared circle. And if you're within the sound of my voice, that must mean you're in the seats with once more. As always, my name is Dave Voigt, and I'm the host of this podcast, where we sit down with a wide-ranging variety of industry professionals and pick their brain about current projects, state of the industry, how they got started, and so very much more in a light and conversational fashion. And if you like how we do things, and... Well, let's be honest, you're listening to us right now, so I would assume that you do. Uh, you can find us uh, basically wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, Apple, Spotify, Amazon, Google, and also you can find every single one of our episodes archived over at our YouTube channel. Also, we'd love it if you'd follow us on social media. Uh, either at its at In The Seats or at its Podcast One for all sorts of updates. And finally, and most importantly, please pay us a visit over at In The Seats in the seats.ca for all the latest and greatest movie news and reviews and even some television and uh, just uh, us writing about the moving image because that's kind of what we love to do and we love it when you read about it. Uh, and that, that dovetails into uh, today's episode because uh, we got a good one and it is uh, the Canadian Film Fest is going on right now uh, on the Super Channel here in the States for those of you who don't know and it's it definitely highlights a lot of fantastic uh, independent Canadian cinema so I do recommend you sign up for the Super Channel if you want to check out some high quality Canadian cinema, uh, and it's important, which is important to support, and we love doing that here at In the Seats. Uh, but uh, we are talking about the uh, the film, The Last Villains, Mad Dog and Butcher, which is playing. Uh, let me check tomorrow night, well, Saturday night, excuse me, uh, from nine until eleven on uh, and repeating at midnight uh, on the Super Channel. And it is the story of uh, the Vachon family. And if you don't know who the Vachon family is, they are, uh, they are a family of pro wrestlers. They are a family of iconic bad guys. Uh, and we, ha- you know, which was led by Mad Dog, and there was Luna Vachon. And there was a, there was a whole clan who, uh, who got into the wrestling business and were, were excellent at being heels, or bad guys, as it were. And... Uh, this film sits down with the only surviving member of the family, Paul the Butcher Vachon. And it really does sort of highlight uh, just uh, not just the hard road that professional wrestling can have, but how much the people who take that road enjoy the hell out of it. And it's, it's, uh, it's an unexpected kind of feel-good story because there's some down moments, but at the end of the day, it's, it's definitely a positive film and it's a, got a positive message. And we sit down with writer-director uh, Thomas uh, Rinfre 
and we talked about sort of how he got started on the film, the inspiration for it, uh, the the journey that he took, and sort of uh, the mirror that that uh, pro wrestling kind of shows on storytelling as well, and they really go side by side, and it's a it's a fascinating film. It can be one for well, wrestling fans or not wrestling fans, but it's it's a real humanistic story, and Paul. Uh, Vachon is a great subject who you just want to know more about. And, uh, well, I hope you enjoy our talk with Thomas because it was a good one. And definitely check out the film this coming Saturday night on the Super Channel as a part of the Canadian Film Festival. <laughs> now, I mean, obviously, first off, just congratulations on the film. I really did enjoy it. But, I mean, walk me through, I guess, sort of, uh, I guess the origin of you deciding to want to make a movie, not just about Paul, but about sort of the, the Vachon legacy. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> it was uh, how is it a question you're asking yeah, me? Yeah, just how, how, how what the what the how the idea got started. Uh, well, it's uh, it's um, it first started with a discussion I had with the the producer Valerie. Uh, she told me that we that she might be able to have the rights to tell the story of the Vachon family. Uh, Myself not being a wrestling fan at all, um, <clears throat> I wasn't sure if um, I was the right person. But but that was for the first second thinking about it. The second, in two seconds later, <laughs> I knew it was for me because I r already had a feeling that there was something magical that could be possible with anything that had to do with re with wrestling <clears throat> mostly with uh wrestling from the past because i had no i didn't have to think about what's going on with wrestling these days in this case but i knew that uh as a documentary filmmaker uh wrestling might be a great opportunity to bring documentary in different places uh just because wrestling is wrestling. So that was even before meeting Paul, you know? Uh, I didn't even know I had a, a, a good uh, character. That was just my first thought. How long did, uh, okay, walk me through your first meeting with Paul. Was was he on board or did it take some, some talking into? Well, it started, um, it started because we needed to make this interview like a real, long uh in-depth interview with him because we didn't know how long paul was going to be able to tell his stories mm. he was already 77 at, at the time uh paul had many cancers and i didn't know him at all so what i was told is that paul my, paul might die any day that's what i had that's the information i had so um before we went any further in this project, I said, we have to make a full interview with him. So at least we have his version, his version of the stories of his life, of their lives. And uh, that's what we did. So we went to Montreal to meet him, uh, organized this interview. And that's when I first met Paul. And this is exactly the moment I knew that uh, I was going to spend a lot of time with him. It was worth <laughs> it was worth it to spend time with Paul because he was such a great storyteller, and because he was such an interesting uh, character. At least to me, that's how I felt. Well, no, so, and and you're absolutely right. And I mean, I think something that the film really does highlight well is. Uh, on one end, while sort of the legacy of the Vachon family is this big, larger-than-life thing, there are costs that they've paid, and I mean, there's been there's been real tragedy in their lives as well. And I mean, was he on board for telling the whole story and not just telling sort of maybe the pro wrestling side, glossier side of the story? No, exactly, and that's 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 what that's what he is. I mean, he's he has with him. In a sort of a backpack, I would say, is is past and he's is he's in. I don't know if you can say that, but he's impersonating. Can you say that? Like yeah. he has that in him, you know, uh, the tough life of a wrestler, 
the tough light of, of, uh, of, of, of man on the road, uh, alcoholic for many years, uh, getting beat up and, you know, everything. So, so that was, that's what, that's the part of the story that, that, that was really interesting to me. Uh, I knew I was going, I was not going to get into the wrestling facts in any way, because mm -hmm. I had no interest into that. And I, I wanted to make a movie that was going to be interesting for people like me, for, for, for anyone that, well, they were either they're a wrestling fan or not. That was, that was the point. So I, I, was, I was aiming at something more universal, something more human. And uh, that, that was my angle. So that's, that's how I started. Yeah. No. And I mean, it does highlight that it's, it can be a hard life, but it's the love is there and just sort of the passion for what they do. I mean, the passion for getting to pe get people to hate you is, is a unique passion, but I mean, it's one, it's one distinct for the wrestling business. And it's one of those things where to see sort of uh, the vigor behind that these people put behind the business is really a fascinating character th character study to watch because like you say sort of on one end he's playing santa claus but on the other end he he's the butcher like he's the butcher and he's being santa claus all at the same time it really is sort of makes for an interesting sort of dynamic of the personalities that get involved in the business yeah totally and <clears throat> that's who paul is i mean he's is living for the present time he has fun he sees the right side of everything, or almost, and uh, and and that what that's that's what make the whole adventure of making this movie so great. You know, I was I'm 40 years old now. I was 30 something, 35, 36 when I started the film, and uh, <clears throat> to 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 set your pace at uh, the same rhythm as a elderly person, you know, is, yeah. is something just by itself, you know, being with them, uh, asking Paul to do things or to ask, to ask questions, to uh, bring him to a certain place to have something there for the movie. Uh, everything was slower and everything was at his pace. And at first I had to fight in the, 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 the urge of, of doing things fast, you know, the way I do things at my age. And I quickly realized that Paul was trying his best, but I had to follow his pace. And, um, and, and his, 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 that's, that was hard at the beginning. But then, but then I, 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 I saw how uh, positive he was and how life was great with Paul and that changed the whole thing. It became a different world for me. It, dif it, it became Paul's world. I was in, Paul, in Paul's world all the way through the, the making of the film, yeah. Well, and I mean, I think that's, that's a tone that you really sort of struck very well because while you very clearly illustrated that pro wrestling is a hard life and there has been a lot of tragedies in his life, he wouldn't trade any of it for a world for, for a second, which is, which really makes him such a unique character to seeing on screen. Yeah. He wouldn't trade anything. He, he, he takes the, the mistakes he made as a, you know, he, he's not, he has no regrets. He has no bad feelings or he, he, I never felt he had any bad feelings for anybody. So, yeah, it's great. It's a great lesson, I think. To me, it was, uh, it was something you want to grow towards, you know, getting old and have no regrets, have no hard feelings. Um, it's, it's, it's a lesson. No, for sure. It absolutely is. And, I mean, just by watching, in watching the film... Because I mean, I will admit I am a wrestling fan, and I was I was surprised at the amount of archival footage it, that you had. And I'm curious for you, as a not a wrestling fan, how was it to sort of not to dive into all these archives of all this footage to find all these amazing clips? And I mean, and who helped you along the way? Well, I had a great helper, that's for sure. Her, her name is Annie uh, Charlebois, and she was the co-script writer also. 
So we were really working as a team uh, all the way through the, you know, I was shooting by myself, filming by myself or with the guys that were helping me with the camera. But sometimes I was, most of the time I was by myself with the camera in my hands. But then when I would come back with the footage, uh, I would work with Anik and uh, we would try to structure uh, the film, but also she was the, um, she was in charge of finding the archives. So this was all together, you know, like making the script together and looking for archives together. She was finding them, showing them to me. And I would say, that's interesting. That's the mood I want. I don't want the, you know, the TV mood. I want the film, the film mood. So we were trying to find uh, archives that were shot on 16 millimeter film, film instead of uh, just TV footage, mm. you know? Uh, so that was very important to me. So we, we found sources that, that had that, and uh, that's, that's how we did it. And just look around on the internet and everywhere. So, but that, that was one of the main um, uh, motivation for me because I knew the social importance that wrestling had uh, in those years. Uh, wrestling was important for people in Quebec or in Canada. It was like a, it was kind of it was kind of a, like a, a social relief, considering how people lived back then. You know, with right. religion, hard work, and everything. So, by looking at those archives and diving into them, I realized even more how important it was for people. They were believing in wrestling or they wanted to play a part of it you know they, it was it was kind of somewhere in between uh people were still asking themselves if if it was true are they really hitting are they really hurting themselves or they're just playing like a on a in a theater so um <laughs> the answer is both <laughs> the answer is both yeah it is it is and then, then paul paul told me uh right away when i asked him <laughs> he, but uh, uh yeah so 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 yeah those archives and the, that's what made me so interested in the movie i i i have to say that uh that it was just magical to go through all this it was it was great yeah now, I mean, one of the main sort of similarities that I love between filmmaking and pro wrestling is that really they're both storytelling. And I'm kind of curious from your perspective, as a, as a visual storyteller, what have you learned from pro, pro wrestling as, about the art of storytelling? That's a good question. Um, well, like I said at the beginning, I think uh, making a movie, any kind of, you know, genre, I would say, but the documentary genre, which is normally based on true facts okay and 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 you have to tell the truth and but then with wrestling you can play with the with the with what's true and what's not because it it is wrestling and that's the game we're playing so that's what make that's what made paul so interesting to me is because i was not try i, I never try to know to find the truth i was following paul's tales and i was listening to them and i was i chose right away to believe what paul was telling me even though it was impossible sometimes he would tell the same story and it would change from one time to the to, to the next and it was always different but but that's what i wanted to put on screen that's what i wanted people to feel it's the it's what it, it is what wrestling is you know you have to 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 kind of put your your um uh, i don't know how to say that but your I, I would say even your head apart you know you put you put you put your your the way you want to see the way you see life the way you see truth and 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 false and everything and you, you have to put that aside and and just have fun you know so I'm sorry, it's hard for me to explain in English. No, no, but... no, no. You no, you're coming across fine. It's don't worry about that. And I mean, it 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 also leads me to something else because especially in the Vachon family legacy, a, as great as Paul's career was, he's never the first name to come up. It's always Mad Dog. And I'm kind of curious, how is he 
with his sort of place in the legacy of his family name because it's people don't think people don't always go to the butcher first they go to mad dog first of course and they even go to luna yeah that. or people in the u.s in the usa will go to will think of luna and then they'll they'll go to mad dog and then maybe paul but not really so and that was my first thought too i mean okay i'm i'm, I'm gonna make a I might make a film on the one guy that is not known <laughs> or he's, he was well known. I mean, but he was not the big star of the family for sure. So, and, and, and when I met Paul, I realized that he was probably the best one to tell me that story because he saw it from a different angle. He saw it as a, as a gypsy. He was doing the, he was, he was living the life that his brother had uh, opened for them. He jumped in and just uh, took the opportunity and, and really did it for the love of traveling and meeting people and, and partying and have fun. So his per perspective was less one of an athlete than one of uh, someone who, who, who really enjoyed it. So uh, I, I didn't, I never had the chance to, to meet Mad Dog uh, before his death. But from what I see in his interviews, he was really focused. He was more like an Olymp Olympic athlete, athlete and, and, and that would have been much different uh, to make a film with someone like that, you know? When, during this entire process, because, I mean, when you're making documentary film, I can imagine you're doing a lot of shooting, you're doing a lot of research, but you don't always necessarily know when you've got a movie. During the entire process, when was the moment that you knew that this was going to work as a film? I had a feeling at the first interview that something was possible because I, I met the guy, I met Paul, and, and that was a good start. Good enough to, to leave with, to go with my camera with no budget and just start shooting and spend time on the project. And then I shot right away, I shot a scene that I, I don't want to spoil for people who have, have not seen the movie yet, but I shot the last scene of the movie. Oh, okay. You referred, you referred to it earlier. Um, I shot that, so I knew I had something there. I knew that Paul was still uh, a very interesting character, even at 77. So all the way through, every time I would go somewhere, I would get something interesting that I knew would make the film. And uh, I knew I had something more touching and I was uh, actually achieving what I wanted when I went to Alberta. And that's when he met uh, his son. And that's when I knew that my goal of making, of going, further than than wrestling and just you know telling us telling the, the the people stories about wrestling i knew i was i was able i was going to be able to to go much a bit or much deeper i would say uh into the human side of paul of of this movie well and i, I mean i think you did because it i think the real at least for me the real important message of the film was just to to, to to put all that you can into loving life for no matter sort of the obstacles that may come in your way. And Paul has had quite a few obstacles and quite a few pitfalls and tragedies in his life. But like we said at the beginning, he, it's not something he would ever trade in for, for anything. And I'm kind of curious for you, like as this movie gets out to more and more audiences, what is your hope for the pullback on the film? For what people think about it. You mean? Exactly. Or, yeah. Well, I, 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 I mean, it's, I always thought it was a feel good movie. So it you go through different phases in the film. You go through Paul's life and the Vashan's life, but then you end up with a message like you said and and you're right. This is this is the message. I mean, you 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 you, you um, see someone uh, living a life and seeing the right, the good side of everything almost and that's something that uh, that is i think is there anything more important than that in life i mean being happy and, and being able to 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 
no paul lives in a in a in a trailer mm. paul lives in the back of a truck and and that makes him happy and he doesn't need more than that he needs just enough money to 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 eat and as long as he can see his friends and as he can tell his stories the guy's happy yeah so i think i think it's a great message yeah that would that would be it i think no and, and i mean and you're right i mean it's a feel good movie but it's not an obvious feel good movie which i think is the real is the real magic of it and uh, I just, you know, you're 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 part of the Canadian Film Festival, and you're going to be playing on the weekend. And I just want to say congratulations again on the film, and thank you so much for the time today. All right, thank you very much, David. All right, Appreciate thanks, it. Thomas. And don't forget to uh, to visit our friends over at Bay Street Video for all your DVD, Blu-ray rental, or purchasing needs this summer, as they are still open for curbside and some mailing delivery as well. Over at 1172 Bay Street, Toronto, Ontario, Canada, you can give them a call at 416-964-9088. That's 416-964-9088. Or send them an email at baystreetvideoto at gmail.com for any of your DVD and Blu-ray needs.